Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're talking about Home by the Sea by Elizabeth Vonnerberg. Um, and a couple notes at the top that there's some sexual suggestions, uh, suicide or self-harm are briefly mentioned in this story. Uh, with that, let's go ahead and hop into our passage. Someone made me too. Not in the same way, but someone made me. And I don't know when I'm going to die either. The small, ironic smile comes back. I'm beginning to have an inkling, mind you. The smile disappears, but I'm not certain. I don't know the date. That's what being human is like, too. Haven't you learned anything in 15 years? The only way to be sure is to kill yourself, which you didn't. So keep on. You'll still live long enough to forget lots of things and learn them all over again. Uh, Home by the Sea by Elizabeth Vonnerberg follows... Manau, um, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, M-A-N-O-U, an artificially created human on her journey home to see her mother or creator, if you want to think of it that way, whatever perspective you're coming to the story or what kind of place you are within the story. Um, the story takes place in the far future where large sections of the world are uninhabitable to most humans due to radiation, water levels, or other disasters. Um, the human race seems to be dying out slowly. Uh, some organizations in the past have tried to accelerate this extin extinction, while others have worked to attempt to reinvigorate the species, largely unsuccessfully. Uh, Manau, our protagonist, was initially on track to eventually graduate and work for the Institute, which is w one of the organizations working for the, quote, rehabilitation of the wonderful human race, unquote. However, she discovered during a medical test that she is in fact an artifact a bioengineered human look-alike. Feeling betrayed that her mother never told her and that she is now less than human, she runs away, uh, drowning in the language of the story. She takes on work as a recuperator. This dangerous work involves going into zones and collecting specimens for lab use. The most demanded specimens are mutated humans, but Manau sees their common humanity and chooses only to collect what she calls lower animals and plants. Now 15 years have passed since Manau initially ran away, and riding a train towards her next contaminated zone, she is stopping to see her mother for the first time since she ran away. A young girl on the train remarks, Is that a lady? Confused by Manau's posture and more masculine appearance. This is the remark that launches the initial narration of the story. After this, Manau sees her mother again, and what seemingly starts as a tense conversation between creator and created turns recognizably familial. Manau's mother, Tycho, reveals that Manau was not created with false memories or as an experiment. Instead, Manau was truly a daughter to Tycho in every way but birth. Tycho even reveals that Manau is equipped with the ability to bear children and maternally chides her for not having children already. Uh, Manau, seemingly freed and at home, takes off into the water to swim in the ocean with the mermaid-like artificially created humans swimming off in the distance, an optimistic inversion of her drowning earlier in the story. Which takes us into our notes for this story. So some of the things going on that I'd like to talk about are first, um, kind of this idea of monster or monstrousness in the story, right? Uh, throughout, she refers to herself as a monster or sees herself as a monster or remarks on how um, like the specimens or uh, the kind of mutated people in the zones are seen as monstrous. And what we really get throughout the story is that is monster is less that monster is a an inherent status and more of a kind of um, a status of being socially rejected, right? That there's no inherent monstrousness to anything. Um, next up, apocalypse or thriving, rejecting life versus accepting life, sterility versus fertility. Clearly, the story is battling with this theme, and it's tying these themes together, right? Whether there is a literal kind of wasteland on Earth versus a kind of thriving um, society and a thriving thriving life on the planet. And it's tying that into kind of these themes of sterility and fertility, kind of accepting life versus rejecting or kind of uh, suicide, as it were. Um, and they're also tying that really a lot into kind of motherhood and kind of generation, right? The whole story is grappling with this idea of sterility, whether that's a planet-wide sterility or an individual or... Um, kind of a lack of bond between mother and child, um, which I, I would like to point out has some possible dangerous uh, kind of archetypes, right? You can think back to, um, I think it's in one of the Marvel movies, uh, maybe it's Avengers 2, um, Black Widow calls herself a monster for being sterile, and th that's an uncomfortable 
it's it's a dangerous and harmful trope that's been around in fiction for a while, right? That sterile women are, or women who are not able to give birth are somehow less than women, right? And so um, when we're looking at the notes in the story, uh, another thing we want to think about is kind of the symbolism. One of the big symbols in the story, obviously, is the sea or water. Um, specifically, things associated with change and drowning and mermaids. Um, water traditionally represents change or fluidity. And throughout, the, it's also uh, inverted by the story. Initially, you know, she is described as drowning. And by the end, she is thriving in it and kind of um, back to life, which again, ties into what we already talked about with the theme of accepting life versus rejecting life. Um, and finally, a big theme in the story also is family, motherhood, home, um, a return to home, right? And a return to kind of um, some parts of life that one was neglecting, which takes us into our final part of this video. Uh, one of the big questions of the story is what does it mean to be a monster? And what does it mean to be a human? And where do these definitions come from? Are they opposites? Do they overlap? Or is there some other relationship between these ideas? As always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answer. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but this is a subject that you can go really in depth on. Um, I hope you enjoyed this story. It's one of my favorite stories that I've covered so far on this channel. Um, please check it out, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.